Here are the top stories for today, September 22, 2021. President Rodrigo Duterte issued strong words against wealthy nations as he asserts the need for equal distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. The Food and Drug Administration targets to put up a fill and finish facility for COVID-19 vaccines next year. Manila Mayor Isco Moreno Dumagoso is formally announcing his candidacy in the 2022 presidential bid. And the House of Representatives has approved the proposed 12% value-added tax on digital transactions such as Netflix and Spotify. Good day, I am William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. President Rodrigo Duterte issued strong words against wealthy nations as he asserts the need for equal distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. Speaking on the first day of the high-level general debate of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly, President Duterte said the rich and poor countries must reject any form of inequality. He particularly mentioned the plans of other rich countries on getting COVID-19 booster shots. He said it is shocking and selfish as developing countries can hardly get the required doses of the life-saving jabs. We strongly urge our privileged partners to fully support the COVAX facility and further strengthen other cooperation mechanisms. We need this to save more lives break the cycle of variants, and help ensure global economic recovery. The Philippines, for its part, has committed to $1 million U.S. million to the COVAX facility as its modest contribution to the collective fight against COVID-19. President Rodrigo Duterte has assured the United Nations General Assembly that he would hold accountable any anti-drug operatives in the country who acted beyond bounds during operations. President Duterte said the Philippines and the UN's recent signing of a three-year joint program on human rights is a model for constructive engagement between the two parties. The DOJ has started the review of cases of police officers in anti-illegal drugs operations that resulted in the death of drug suspects. The PNP, on the other hand, has ensured full cooperation amid the DOJ's investigation. I have instructed the Department of Justice and the Philippine National Police to review the conduct of our campaign against illegal drugs. Those found to have acted beyond bounds during operations shall be made accountable before our law. People want to live in peace, security in their homes and communities, free from harm and danger from the lawless. But achieving this goal has not been without challenges. I say this in no uncertain terms. The law applies to all. President Duterte's latest statement came after the International Criminal Court's pre-trial chamber has approved the request of its former chief prosecutor, Fatou Bin Souda, to conduct a full-blown investigation into the crime against humanity allegedly committed in his campaign against illegal drugs. The president merely shrugged off the ICC's latest move and maintained that he would not cooperate with the International Court when it launches its probe. President Rodrigo Duterte stressed the importance of the Philippines' historic arbitral victory against China in the South China Sea. Speaking at the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly, he said the Permanent Court of Arbitration's 2016 ruling, as well as the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea or UNCLOS, provides a clear path towards a just, fair, and win-win solution for all. The 1982 UNCLOS and the 2016 Arbitral Award of the South China Sea provide a clear path towards a just, fair, and win-win solution for all. The award must be seen for what it is, a benefit across the world to all who subscribe to the majesty of the law. No amount of willful disregard by any country, however big and powerful can diminish the arbitral awards importance. 
President Rodrigo Duterte urged rich countries to do their part in mitigating the effects of climate change. In his address at the 76th United Nations General Assembly, President Duterte warned that the world has reached a critical tipping point and failure to act will lead to cataclysmic consequences. He said that the Philippines accepts its share of responsibility and targets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 75% by the year 2030. But this contribution will be rendered useless if the biggest polluters past and present choose to do business as usual. We therefore appeal for urgent climate actions, especially those who can truly tip the balance. Manila Mayor Isco Moreno de Magoso is formally announcing his candidacy in the 2022 presidential bid. Manila Public Information Office Chief Julius Leonen earlier confirmed that Mayor Isco Moreno is running for president along with Dr. Willie Ong as his vice president. So far, there are three confirmed candidates for the May 2022 presidential elections. The other two aspirants are boxing icon and Senator Manny Pacquiao and graft buster Senator Panfilo Lapson. Mayor Isco Moreno's running mate, Dr. Willie Ong, is an internist and a former consultant of the Department of Health who has a huge following on social media. Meanwhile, Senator Panfilo Lapson will run for president with Senate President Vicente Soto as his running mate. Senator Manny Pacquiao will also run for president under the PDP Laban under his faction, while President Rodrigo Duterte will run as vice president under the separate faction of the PDP Laban. Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio, who reiterated that she will not run for president, confirmed that she would seek re-election as mayor next year. She earlier urged the Filipino people to extend their strongest support to President Duterte's vice presidential bid. More than 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines are expected to arrive by the end of October. National Task Force against COVID-19 Chief Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. said 22 million doses are expected to arrive before the end of September until the first week of October. The government is also renegotiating with the Russian Direct Investment Fund for the Sputnik Light or the single-dose version of Sputnik V. The Philippines recorded the highest volume of deliveries from September 13 to 19. The Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, targets to put up a fill-and-finish facility for COVID-19 vaccines next year. FDA Director General Eric Domingo said the department is currently in talks with the Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Science and Technology, and several vaccine manufacturers. Gusto natin talaga this year, pag para nga, hindi tayo gantong nahihirapan na nag import ng vaccine. So yung pong DOST at DTI, meron na pong several companies sila na kinakausap. Kaya lang, syempre po, itong mga gantong bagay, it takes uh, some time para po mag-material, ma-finalize po ang mga usapan at saka po yung mga agreements. No? So there are several companies that are being looked into now both uh, overseas tapos po local partner din dito sa Pilipinas. At meron namang mga existing factories na rito na makakapasa naman po sa standards no for fill and finish. Yung mga existing manufacturer na natin na baka maaaring i-realign nila no sa mula sa ibang gamot na injectables to vaccine. So possible 'yon. But of course, later on kapag hindi na po COVID-19 ang kailangan ng vaccines, gusto rin natin na makapag-branch out din sila into other vaccines na kinagamit natin sa ating mga regular na vaccination programs. The United States has eased its travel restrictions for fully vaccinated individuals. Starting November, travelers can enter the country by presenting their fully vaccinated cards and a negative COVID-19 test result taken within three days before departure. The United States also scrapped the mandatory 14-day quarantine for vaccinated travelers. Meanwhile, unvaccinated Americans returning to the United States need to undergo COVID-19 testing one day before departure. They should also show proof that they have bought a test to take after arriving in the United States. Still to come, the Commission on Elections says it will still continue to do its task despite threat of a slash on its 2022 budget. And the House of Representatives has approved the proposed 12% value-added tax on digital transactions such as Netflix and Spotify. Details ahead, keep it here 
on the PNA Newsroom. Yorme Isko po, bakuna po ang ating kasangga sa patuloy na pandemya. Kaya upang maproteksyonan ang ating sarili at mga mahal sa buhay, wag po nating palampasin ang pagkakataong magpabakuna sa lalong madaling panahon. Tandaan na sa patuloy na laban kontra COVID-19, ang disiplinadong Pilipino ay rehistrado para maging bakunado. Magparehistrot Magpabakuna para sa ligtas na pamilya, ligtas na bayan. Manila, God first! Hi everyone, James Deacon here. The COVID-19 vaccines are finally here and the government wants to make sure the vaccines reach us. So let's do our part by making sure that we get registered to be included in the vaccination list of our LGU. You can register right in the comfort and safety of your own homes through your LGU's online registration platform. And you can also register on site in the vaccination venues or through your barangay. Remember, getting vaccinated is the first step towards ending this pandemic. So let's do our part as disciplined citizens. Bida ang may disiplina. Magpaharehistrot, magpabakuna para sa ligtas na pamilya, ligtas na bayan. The Commission on Elections remains firm with its earlier decision not to extend the September 30 deadline of the nationwide voter listing. Despite the congressional threat of a slash on its 2022 budget, the poll body says it will still continue to do its task, which is to hold electoral exercises in the country. The COMELEC said it will accept whatever the decision of the lawmakers with regards to the poll body's proposed budget for next year. Kavalek spokesperson James Jimenez said Congress has the power to slash, maintain, or increase the poll body's proposed 41.9 billion peso budget for 2022. Jimenez also said that Congress unquestionably holds the power of the purse and that the Kamalek can only do its utmost to fulfill its mandate to hold secure, accurate, free, and fair elections. The Department of Health emphasized that RT-PCR testing remains to be the gold standard for confirming the presence of SARS-CoV-2. The DOH reiterated its stand after the Commission on Elections said that they will use antigen tests as a screening method during events, including the filing of Certificates of Candidacy or COCs next month. Berhera earlier discouraged the use of antigen tests for screening persons joining the filing of Certificates of Candidacy. She explained that antigen tests are only useful during the acute phase of the disease when the viral load is high, which is within five days after the onset of symptoms. As such, it must not be done on asymptomatic, unexposed individuals, travelers, or for border control. In response to Berhere, Kamalek spokesperson James Jimenez said antigen tests have been accepted by the House of Representatives as a requirement for entry into their premises. At least 16% of residents in Davao del Norte have reportedly been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. More on this and other news from the provinces. Here is our report. The provincial government of Davao del Norte reported that as of September 19, a total of 120,938 people in the province have been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. The number is equivalent to 16% of the targeted individuals to achieve population protection. The Department of Health in Region 11 increased the vaccine allocation for the province of Davao del Norte after Governor Edwin Jubahib appealed to the national government to increase their supply. The provincial government announced that it would begin the Res Bacuna inoculation program this week in 20 vaccination sites throughout the province. 
Meanwhile, the DOH Caraga has called on the public to take advantage of the free vaccines from the government amid the continuing rise in COVID-19 infections in the region. DOH 13 Assistant Director Salaidi Rakhi-In urged residents to get vaccinated to protect themselves from the virus and help the government attain a 70% herd immunity. As of September 17, a total of 747,332 doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered in the region. A total of 373,968 individuals have been fully vaccinated, while 373,364 have already received their first shot of COVID-19 vaccines. In other news, the confidence in COVID-19 vaccination is rising in Zamboanga City as nearly half of the 917 respondents in a public survey have signified their intention to get vaccinated. 26% of the respondents are willing to be inoculated with any brand of vaccines, while 23% are only willing to get vaccinated with specific brands. 8% of the respondents do not want to be inoculated at all, while the remaining respondents have already been vaccinated. The public opinion survey was conducted from August 25 to 31 by the Research Evaluation and Statistics Division of the Office of the City Planning and Development Coordinator. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Marita Muahe. The City Mall of Tagum City in Davao del Norte and Cotabato City is holding registration for the Philippine Identification System or PhilSys registration until September 30. City Mall Tagum City's registration started on September 16, while the Cotabato City branch began the sign up way back on June 21. Even those who are not from Tagum or Cotabato can register as long as they have a valid identification card or other documents. In continuing posts, PhilSys said, those aged 5 to 14 years old must be accompanied by parents or guardians and must present the childbirth certificate. Phil Sis emphasized the Philippine ID is free of charge and warned against individuals or groups offering registration assistance for a fee. The House of Representatives on Tuesday night approved on final reading proposal imposing a 12% value-added tax on digital transactions such as Netflix and Spotify subscriptions. House Bill 7425 seeks to amend Section 105 of the National Internal Revenue Code by taxing digital service providers that operate through online platforms. The bill aims to generate new funding sources for the country's COVID-19 response efforts. Albay Representative Joey Salceda said, foreign corporations selling digital services such as Netflix, Spotify, and others will have to pay for and impose that on their services. Digital services include online licensing or software, mobile apps, video games and online games, webcasts and webinars, and digital content such as music and online training, among others. Salceda said no new taxes would be imposed as he guaranteed exemptions for small businesses. The bill would also exempt books and other printed materials that are sold electronically or online from that. The House of Representatives on Tuesday started its plenary deliberations on the proposed 5.024 trillion peso budget for 2022. Zamboanga City Representative Manuel Dalipe said the proposed budget would be crucial towards the country's path for recovery from the impact of the global COVID-19 pandemic. Dalipe said about 395 billion pesos has been allocated for COVID-19 response measures, including infrastructure in the proposed budget for next year. The social services sector will receive the largest share of the 1.92 trillion pesos or 38% of the total 2022 budget. Speaker Lord Alan Velasco earlier vowed a swift and smooth passage of the spending measure for 2022 by the end of September. The House aims to pass its version of the 2022 national budget by September 30 or before Congress suspends session on October 17 for the filing of Certificates of Candidacy or COCs.
Up next, subversive books and reading materials are being pulled out from a university and library in the north. While more residents in Escalante Negros Occidental who are victims of CPP NPA extortion said they will no longer vow to the demands of the rebels. We're back after a quick break. Stay with the PNA Newsroom. Kalinga State University has pulled out all reading materials sent by the National Democratic Front to its library. KSU library officials said the books were sent to them even without a request. On its social media page, the university said, Pull out is proof that the institution opposes the CPP, NPA, and DF ideologies. The materials pulled out from the KSU library serves as recruitment tools of the communist terrorist groups. The Isabella State University, meanwhile, has also pulled out 23 NDF handbooks from the library of its main campus in this town. ISU President Rick Mar Aquino expressed support for the government's program Whole of Nation approach. He assured that their students shall not be exposed to anything that will destroy their future. Former members of the CPP, NPA, NDF, and the youth sector, meanwhile, supported the pullout of deceiving reading materials from state universities and colleges. Some 33 residents of Escalante City, Negros Occidental, who have been victims of extortion activities of the Communist Party of the Philippines' New People's Army, have vowed to stop providing support to the communist terrorist group. The residents reaffirmed their full support to the programs of the government to end insurgency during the community awareness activity in Barangay Balintawak on September 17. Their names were listed on documents recovered by government troops after their encounters with NPA rebels in Barangay Malasibog and Barangay Capitan Ramon Silay City. Last May, about 25 business owners in Escalante City also pledged not to help communist terrorists and reaffirmed their full support to the campaign against insurgency. Meanwhile, Mayor Melesho Yap Jr. urged his constituents to stop supporting the CPP NPA and its allied organizations for peace and progress to thrive. Military and local officials in a Maguindanao upland town have settled long-standing family feuds that claimed lives and destroyed properties. Buldon Town Mayor Abulais Manalao and Marine Brigadier General Jonas Lumawag Commander of the 1st Marine Brigade led the forging of peace covenants between families locked in clan wars or Rido. Manalo said their decades-long misunderstanding was mostly due to land conflict or land ownership. He said the local government is eager to extend help to prevent armed conflict and maintain peace in their communities. Lumawag, meanwhile, hailed the former warring clans for choosing the path to peace and for laying down their unlicensed firearms. The officer appealed for the surrender of more unlicensed guns that are still in the hands of civilians.
Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. President Rodrigo Duterte issued strong words against wealthy nations as he asserts the need for equal distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. The Food and Drug Administration targets to put up a fill and finish facility for COVID-19 vaccines next year. Manila Mayor Isco Moreno Dumagoso is formally announcing his candidacy in the 2022 presidential bid. And the House of Representatives has approved the proposed 12% value-added tax on digital transactions such as Netflix and Spotify. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear your face masks and face shields, wash your hands often, practice safe physical distancing, go out only for essential reasons, and get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log onto the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And as of present, it is 94 days to go before Christmas. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day to everyone.